Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have lots of stuff going on. It's the peak week, one of the peak weeks of the hurricane season here. We have Hurricane Katia moving off into the northern Atlantic, and we can see that she's starting to curve northwest now. Her eye is gone from yesterday. She really put on a show, went up to Cat 4, like she looked like yesterday morning, and she's now going through what looks like a second eye wall replacement cycle, and I'm convinced these things get prompted more often by dry air. You can see there's an area where there should be spiral bands to the northwest of the storm and there aren't. There's dry air and restriction of the outflow here and she could have maintained a larger eye yesterday sort of like Isabel did, did in 2003 but she didn't do that. She collapsed due to some dry air entrainment. She got too large for her own good as a lot of the storms this year have because the vertical instability is a lot lower than normal this year so these storms are having a hard time getting large without entraining dry air and so now her eye is gone again and that will probably be it for the peak of her intensity and she'll remain a major for a while but will eventually slough off as she starts to recurve and she'll move out to sea between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda nicely sparing everybody. She might still bring some gusty conditions of course to Bermuda in here but she's not going to be a huge issue. Might even bring some gusty winds uh, gusty to tropical storm force at Cape Cod if she passes close enough there but it shouldn't be too much of an issue and she'll move out on one of the most harmless paths that we could hope for for her which is great Next feature we're going to be watching is the tail end of Lee's, Lee's tail here. You can see this frontal boundary here extending all the way down into the southern gulf, and we're going to be watching the tail of this as the models have been jumping all over a little bit of development with this within a couple of days. And we can see on the European at day three starts to develop off the northwestern part of the Yucatan. And we can see that Lee's cutoff up below is still sitting over the center of the country. So the mean break is here, and we're probably going to try to to drive this north northeast towards the United States again so by day five it moves northeast towards the Gulf Coast as expected the GFS has joined the camp of trying to move this under the ridge westward into Mexico like the European was showing yesterday and as I said yesterday I think it makes more sense for this to follow the weakness north if it strengthens at all. Steering currents will be rather weak, but I think it will get drawn north here because Lee's upper low is going to be hanging around for a while. I don't see how it's going to move southwest into Mexico at this point. It's a possibility, but I do think this is going to come north towards the coast. We'll see how much it strengthens. The models aren't too excited with this. The European shows the equivalent of a mod moderate tropical storm. We'll see how it goes here. Conditions will be a little bit sheared in the Gulf from this upper low, but we will have to keep a close eye on it to see if it tries to develop. Our next storm is going to be, well, it's either going to be this or it's going to be this. And which one is going to be Maria? Well, hopefully the one that is the biggest problem because we're going to have to solve a problem like Maria from one of these systems one way or another. We may actually see this get named first. This is Invest 95L here. NHC up to a 70% chance means they're thinking about it. They're probably going to classify it eventually. And if we zoom in on this here, we can see we have a, a broad low but a well-defined one. We see lots of spin with this. Good thunderstorm activity. An ASCAT pass from this morning shows a nice half moon of winds in here. Not quite closed on the western side but we do have a little bit of a center going here near 11 north and then good good winds coming across the northeast quadrant here so this will eventually try to wind up it's interesting to note that the models are not too excited about strengthening this before it gets into this area of the world in here and the GFS eventually strengthens it up by where Katia is right now but until then they keep it fairly weak and what they may be trying to see is once this gets separated from the intertropical convergence zone it might lose support and maybe they're seeing it trying to fall apart a little bit in here before being able to strengthen over warmer water later that could be a possibility, but it looks pretty nice now, and it may get classified today or tomorrow, uh, depending on what the NHC thinks of it. So we may we may see this be a named storm coming in here, and we may see it get a little bit stronger, shorter, um, sooner than the models currently say, but we'll have to see how that goes. Now, in terms of the track of this, we have models for it moving generally west-northwest towards or just north of the very northern leeward Antilles, and I actually agree with these for the most part, which I know I rarely do, but this time right off the bat I think this is a generally good idea. The reason for that is because I disagree with the European. If we go again to day three, 
we can see that it has 95L way down here to the south. Now, there's the thing about the steering of these things. It's always hard to figure out how much latitude they're exactly going to gain as they come west here and whether they gain any or whether they come straight west into the Caribbean. That's always a toughie. But you can see that we have Katia moving straight north here before she recurves around the high. And when we've got these major hurricanes recurving in the western Atlantic, generally you bunch up, you can't see my cursor, you generally bunch up the high in more of a ball to the east of the system when it's moving north. If she's moving north, obviously high pressure is directly to her east over here. And so here it is, the Bermuda High sitting here, generally more of a ball and less of a ridge. And generally tropical waves find a way to gain latitude, either on the eastern side or the western side of the high and only move due west on a short distance due south of the high. So chances are this is going to find a way to gain some latitude before the Caribbean, especially since the high is moving a little bit farther to the north here, due east of Cadia, up at 35 north, chances are it's going to move a little bit farther to the north than the European shows here because day five it's in the center, center of the Caribbean along 15 north. I think it'll be more likely to be closer to the islands up here, maybe slightly north of like the models are showing right now. And the ridge does build in behind Cadia, but we'll have to see. Now what's interesting is that by day 10 we jump out and this is actually 95L here at day 10 trying to wind up near western Cuba and this would what this would do is this would actually satisfy the requirement that I have for a storm in this area of the world in week 3 of September like I've been talking about for the last few days. It's interesting to note that the European may actually be missing 95L and maybe 95L actually goes out like this somewhere and then we have something else come out of the Western Caribbean and develop in here behind 95L and that may be what the European is seeing because it tried to lose the vorticity up here and then kick it out and then something else came up here but it's still happen to be 95L. It may just be confused is what may be happening, but we'll have to see what exactly happens. Obviously, if we get 95L in the islands here, it could be a threat to the United States down the road, so we're going to have to look out for that. The trouble with this pattern, though, in forecasting landfall threat is that by day 8 on the GFS, we can see a big trough over the eastern United States here. This would recurve anything out to sea that tries to hit the United States from the east, whether it's 95L or something else. And, of course, this actually does make sense because, again, we have Lee's cut off upper low sitting over the center of the country. The only way we're going to get rid of this is if it phases with a long wave trough coming out of Canada over the eastern United States. So something like this is going to have to happen at some point during the next 10 days. We will see a big trough like this and charging the southern U.S. again with cold air and high pressure, which will eventually incubate the western Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Bahamas region. So chances are what we might see, and I'm not saying this is necessarily going to happen, but we might see 95L get sacrificed to this trough and then have it leave out, and then by the time we get to day 13, the ridge builds back in and we get something incubated down here to satisfy my third week of September idea that we have a storm in the northwestern Caribbean, southern Gulf, or the Bahamas area. So that might be one, re one way this plays out. Or maybe the Europeans write in 95L is the northwestern Caribbean storm. We'll have to see here, but chances are we're going to have 95L coming a little bit farther north than the European has it here, but either way we're going to have to watch it carefully, first of all for the islands in here, and possibly for folks in this area of the world down the road if it tends to get far enough west. But we're going to have this probably named something, either Maria or Nate, and this either Maria or Nate at some point, so the names are continuing to come one after another here during the week. The peak week of the hurricane season. The peak day is just four days from now, September 10th. So we're right in the meat of it, and we can see we've got a pretty active basin here in the middle of the hurricane season. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.